Hello everyone, welcome to this eighth day of the Novena, of the Christmas Novena for Vocations. I am Father Memo Hernandez, Director of the Office of Vocations, and with me is going to be Eric Pereira, one of our seminarians. He's a St. Patrick Seminary, and he will be with us in a while. He's getting connected, and in the meantime, to let you know that tomorrow is the last day for our Novena, I appreciate very much all of you who have been participating, following and continue seeing these videos in the YouTube account of the Diocese of Sacramento, as well in the Facebook account of my office, which is under the name of Consider Priesthood. Eric, how are you doing? Good evening. Hi, Father. Doing well. How are you doing? I hope you're enjoying your, enjoying your time. Oh, yes. I'm glad to be on break. <laughs> yes. Very good. So, t Eric, uh, so tell us a little bit about you, who you are, who is your family, uh, where are you studying now? Yes, uh, I, was, I was born and raised in Sacramento, California. Um, my parents are immigrants from the Philippines. Um, I have three sisters, two older sisters, and one younger sister, and I have four nephews and one niece. Um, they, and um, my two older sisters live in, in the Sacramento area with my fa with my parents in the in Sacramento area, and my younger sister lives in Los Angeles, but she's here in town for Christmas time. So we're all we're all here together for Christmas, and so thank the Lord that we're we're able to gather together um, this Christmas time. It's a blessing from the Lord certainly to to be gathered together with our families. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. what year are you now in in the seminary? It, at St. Patrick's Seminary, I'm in Theology 3, so this is my fifth year um, in seminary, but I, I'm in Theology 3. Um, God willing, I will be ordained a deacon at the end of this uh, semester, uh, next semester. We so, are um, praying for that uh, to happen. Yes, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, we too, me too. And we ask all those who are watching us today, as we welcome them, to keep in your prayers, Eric, Pereira, as he is in the last stage of his formation before being ordained as deacon and eventually as a priest, God willing. Very good. Thank you. So great. So we welcome once again all those people who are here present, all those who are joining us this evening. Thank you very much for being present today. All those, thank you, all those who have been accompanying us throughout these seven days today, the eighth day of this novena, Christmas novena for, for vocations. We have been praying also for all of you. At the end of this session, we will have this moment for, for you to present to God your petitions, and Eric and I will pray for you. So how about if we start talking about praying? How about if we start with a little prayer so that we may listen to the reflection that Eric has, has to pray for us today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers to his harvest. The peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst. Be with us this day as we gather to pray this novena as preparation for the celebration of your birth in your human flesh at Christmas. Fill our hearts with your blessings and inflame them with your love as we dedicate and offer this novena for the intention of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and our own personal intentions. We also pray for an end to the current COVID-19 pandemic. Illumine our minds and hearts, O oh Lord, as we spend this time listening to your voice that speaks through the reflections made on your word. Make us one with you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Very good. Eric, the mic is on your side. Okay. Well, I have, for my reflection, I wrote a little bit of a, something down, so I'll, I'll mostly read from that. <laughs> Good. 
Have you ever been filled with joy when you heard that a family member or a friend has given birth to a child? I have three sisters, and when they gave birth to their children, I was so happy for them. I remember seeing the pictures of my nephews and niece on social media or text messages and being brought to tears of joy. This joy that filled me is because that I, I realized that they were being blessed with the gift of life. In today's gospel from Luke, we hear about the birth and the naming of John the Baptist by his parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth. When the neighbors and relatives of the family heard that Elizabeth gave birth to John, although she was thought to be barren, they were filled with joy. Can you imagine how happy they were when they heard the news? They probably celebrated and praised and thanked the Lord. The celebration of John's birth helped us to prepare for the birth of Jesus on Christmas. The same joy that John's family and friends felt when they heard that Elizabeth was, being, was blessed with the son, we too ought to have. The Lord invites us to magnify that joy when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, who was sent into this world to save us from our sin and death, giving us the gift of new life. God also invites us to em emulate St. John the Baptist as messengers of conversion. St. John had a special mission to tell the world to prepare their, their hearts and families for the coming of the Lord. This means that we ought to forgive others and let go of any hatred. It also means that God is inviting us to start living the way that he showed us by putting him first. Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John, the Baptist, they were open to God's plan. They're open to what God has had, had planned for them. And they, they're open to their faith. They followed his law, and God blessed them. So this Advent season, as we begin the Christmas season, or as we end this Advent season and begin the Christmas season, we may ask ourselves, how have I prepared my heart for the coming of the Lord at Christmas? Who in my life needs forgiveness? Is there someone that, I'm in my, that I am holding a grudge or hatred against that I need to forgive? And how can I show the joy of Christ and the blessings of the Lord at Christmas? How can I show the joy and the peace that comes from a life full of God? So we pray that we this Christmas season may be full of life, conversion, joy, and peace, knowing that in these hard times, that uh, these hard times of pandemic, that it is God's love that binds us together, calling us closer to him and others. So we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. And it's truth when there is a new baby coming to our, any family, there is so much joy and the families gather together and there is kind of a sense of reconciliation because of the baby, the, 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 the joy that the baby brings to that family, how much more we Christians are called to be joyful because Jesus is born, how much more we should be encouraged to forgive and to ask for forgiveness because the joy of the Lord that, that, that is birth, as you mentioned, should be our motivation. Thank you so much for this beautiful reflection, Eric. Thank you very You're much. Welcome, you did a good job. And and now, once again, we welcome all those who are watching us live, the Stats family, Malcolm, he's joining us today. He's from the Midwest, I guess. Uh, oh. and, and then the Rodriguez family, I saw them somewhere. So now is the time for you who are watching us to ask questions. If you have any question for Eric Pereira, our seminarian, or for me, 
a question about his topic or any kind of question that crosses your mind about his life, about his journey, about he has done, about how he's living as seminarian. Today, right now, is the moment. So feel free to ask those questions as you type them down. In the meantime, Eric, tell us, what, what do your family do for, for Christmas? How does your family celebrate Christmas? Uh-huh. Well, um, my parents are where they're divorced, unfortunately. So we have to celebrate in two different, two different um, times with my father and my mother. Um, we we've usually celebrate uh, on Christmas Eve with my dad and, um, and Christmas with my mother. Um, and we bring all the kids and come together and we visit our families. So that's what we usually do. We have, um, we, we have a big you know, dinner, with usually lunch with my father and then dinner with my mother. Um, and we have a big dinner usually with, at my mom's house. Um, we have the traditional you know, American like ham, but they also have Filipino food. We have pancit and, and uh, uh, um, adobo, but so it's kind of a Filipino-American kind of thing, you know, where we celebrate, you know, American food and, and Filipino food. Um, we usually have, the kids usually open a lot of gifts, and then we, we, we sing songs. We, I usually sometimes play music on the piano, and, the, and we'll sing. Um, but remember, I remember growing up, though, we, my, my, my mom would always make us sing. Um, my, we always have, each of us had to have a song that we had to sing before we could open our gifts. So we would always have this kind of little, sh little, little show, a Christmas show that we would have before um, we can open the gifts. So it's kind of a celebration um, and to show off, you know, show how uh, our gift for, to God of music, to, get, to give him, to give Jesus a gift of uh, celebrating with our gift of, that he gave us of, of music. So it's, um, yeah, that's what we do usually, food and get, get gathered together and sing. That's wonderful. So clarify something for me, for us. When you celebrate Christmas, do you celebrate it on the 24th evening, which is the Christmas Eve, or do you celebrate it on Christmas Day? On both, on both. Yeah. Um, I usually go to, to Mass on Christmas Eve. Um, uh, then, then we celebrate all day, uh, Christmas uh, evening, Christmas Eve evening. And, uh, and then on Christmas morning, we, the, the kids usually open up a little, the gifts, and then we have the rest of us open all the gifts. So both days, Eve and, and the day of Christmas. Okay, very good. So a lot of food. A lot, a lot of, food. of food. Delicious yeah. food. I just remember also <laughs> yes. my time in the Philippines, also enjoying this food and the gatherings. There is here a question <laughs> from the Rodriguez family. Is there going to be an ordination? I guess you're asking is going to be any ordination for priesthood this coming year, 2021? The answer is not. But we are praying, we are hoping that Eric Pereira, here present, he will be ordained as deacon. So it's going to be a diaconate, uh, diaconate ordination or diaconal ordination this coming year, hopefully sometime in summer. So Rodriguez family... You need to pray for, for Eric, please. Yeah, very good. Thank you for your question. Has anyone else Thank you. have any question for Eric or for me? Does anyone? Okay, it seems that today they are kind of quiet. So very good. Any last remark that you want to give to all those who are watching us and those who will be watching this video eventually on the YouTube account of the Diocese Sacramento or on the, at the Facebook account of Consider Priesthood. Do you have any, anything else to add? I would just say, um, again, like I said in my, in my reflection, be joyful. Um, I know it's hard in this time of, of pandemic, um, but this time, Christmas time, is the time to have that joy. It, um, we have the vaccine now is coming out for the for COVID, um, so we're just you know we're turning the corner of this that, of this pandemic, so it's, now it's time to um, to have that joy, and we can see the the end of this you know end of this pandemic and the, and and uh, be happy, 
um, yes, it was a tough year. We survived 2020. And it was, you know, probably one of the hardest years of any of our lives. So this is the time now, Christmas, to have that joy. And, um, and, to, and to remember that we've been blessed by the Lord. That the Lord has given this life to us. And, um, and you know, to be, feel our blessings in this time of Christmas. Wonderful. Thank you so much for this beautiful message. Well, uh, now please accompany me, Eric, and all those who are watching us today to pray. We will pray for all those intentions that people have presented to us in the past days, but also today, those who are watching us live, if you have any particular intention that you want us to pray for, we are praying for the for, for Michelle Stats, of course, yes. We're praying for the recovery, full recovery of the Rodriguez family. Um, I don't know. If you guys want something to ask for, it's the time to type it out. Uh, in the meantime, let us pause for a while. And I will ask also Eric to pause for a while so that we may present to God, we bring to our mind and present to God our needs and the needs of the people that surround us, the needs of our, the church, our church, the needs of our country. Good. And now please, Eric, accompany me by responding to these prayers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art, art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you speak to us and nourish us through the life of this church community. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to send your spirit to us so that men and women among us, young and old, will respond to your call to service and leadership in the church. We pray especially in our day for those who hear your invitation to be a priest, sister, brother, or deacon. May those who are opening their hearts and minds to your call be encouraged and strengthened through our enthusiasm in your service. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and be with you during this time of preparation for Christmas. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, Eric, for your presence here. Thank you for your fidelity to the Lord, all this journey that you have taken so far. And, and we pray so that this coming year will bring good news for you and for the people of God who are awaiting for your ordination. Thank you, Father. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure of uh, being interviewed again. Yes. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas to you and to your family and the rest of the people who are watching us here today. Tomorrow we will have our, another seminarian giving us a reflection and tomorrow is going to be the last day of this novena. Thank you very much, everyone. Blessings. God bless you. Bye-bye.